Hi everyone and welcome to the sixth lesson in our Poetry GCSE revision series. Whether you're sitting the Poetry Anthology this year or just the Unseen Poetry, the way that I've put this course together is this will help you. We'll be looking at all of the things in poetry that you need to be discussing in your essays. We'll be doing some model paragraphs and looking at some essays that have been written already in poetry. Whether you're doing an unseen so you don't need context or the anthology where you need to compare and use context. Um, so today's lesson, what we're going to be doing is looking at how you plan a comparative poetry essay. So there is one of those for poetry anthology. There's also one of those for unseen poetry. So this will be helpful for both. Um, in previous weeks, we've looked through structure in a poem called Bayonet Charge. We've looked at Mother Any Distance and language in that. We've looked at rhythm and rhyme and tone in My Last Duchess. We've looked at themes and motifs in The Manhunt. And last week, I did the same thing that I'm gonna put myself through this week, which is a time pressured poetry plan. So we did a time pressured poetry plan for a poem called Exposure. So that's how I would personally plan for one poem in 10 minutes. Today's lesson, we're going to try and do a time pressured poetry plan on two poems. So we're going to have um, Exposure again and Manhunt. So I want to be very clear when you're planning out in a time pressured way, if it's the poetry anthology, then obviously you will have read both of the poems previously because you'll have studied them either with me or with a, another teacher or tutor or hopefully if, if your teacher missed a couple of the poems which you know fingers crossed they didn't but if they did then maybe you've researched a little bit on your own there's some great youtubers out there that have done really good analysis of all the poems in the love and relationships and uh, conflicts power and conflict anthology all that stuff so you'll know the poems is basically what i'm trying to say if it's the unseen poetry the comparison there you will know one of the poems well because you will have just written a, an answer, a long answer on one of the two poems. And then you just quickly need to integrate the second poem by reading it and looking through some of the art wars. Um, so the way I'm treating it is I'm treating it as if, you know, the, the truth is I've read all of these poems lots of times. So it, it's, I'm treating it as if I've sort of read the poems, I've done some prep on the poems. So it's similar to poetry anthology or similar to the unseen poetry. OK, that's the best I could think to do. Now, I will say this, if you're doing this as an unseen poetry comparison, because that for most of the exam boards, that's only a fairly small question. You may only want to plan for five minutes, depending on how many marks. So just taking AQA for a minute, AQA is only eight marks. So I would not plan that long for that eight mark question. I'll plan five minutes and then go, right? The way I'm planning this today is probably more like the poetry anthology. So I would recommend for the poetry anthology, you want to plan for like about 10, maybe even 15 minutes. And then you want to write for about 25 to 30 minutes and you want to come up with three paragraphs. OK, so we'll come up with our three paragraphs. I'll show you the workflow to that. Um, I'm going to have a nightmare here, the same as I did last week for a second, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create a section where we can write all this stuff down. So I'm just gonna write it here, but I also want to get a timer up the same as I did last week. So um, the question I'm gonna ask myself is, how is the effect of war shown in Manhunt and Exposure? So that's the question. And then we'll also need to have a grid. I'll explain how this works later when it, well, actually, no, I'll set this up because I think that's fair. So you're going to have your points. You're going to have your ideas on Manhunt. You're going to have your ideas of exposure. And then if you're doing, um, if you're doing poetry anthology, you also need to put in some reader response and some context. If you're doing it as an unseen poem, you don't need that section. So I might add a little bit there, particularly I'll add a bit of reader response just to help out. But if you're doing this as a, a pure anthology uh, essay, then you definitely need that, right? So that's that's that part there. Here's where I'm going to have a nightmare for a second. I just need to, I was doing research on uh, another thing. No, I don't read Teen Vogue magazine. I'm trying to find a teenage magazine article for a lesson I'm going to do on English language on Friday. 
So uh, yeah, don't worry, I'm not randomly reading Teen Vogue magazine, but I do need that tab for later. Uh, so timer, I'm gonna set this up. Um, and this is where we're gonna have a bit of struggle, I think. So I need my poetry small group here. There we go, I need my timer here. Sorry about this. You can tell I'm a professional YouTuber. <laughs> Get it all set up perfectly before the lesson, don't I? No. Unfortunately, I have a full time table of students every week. So these, these are videos really to help my students out with their GCSEs this year. And if I can manage to, to, to do some interactive bits as well, then I will. So that's what I'm doing here. Okay, so, so we've got the timer, which we're about to start in a minute. So you just see that there. And we've obviously got our um, plan. All right. so. Um, last thing I'll say before I start the timer is you are going to want to use Art Wars as your way of looking through the poems. Um, and ideally, what you actually will want to do is have the two poems sort of side by side or near each other. So in the real exam, you'll have paper copies of them, so you can just have them in front of you and you can be able to see them more easily. I can't do that today, sadly, so I'm just going to be like clicking between the two like that. But that's okay. I can live with that. Um, all right, so let's get going. And I am going to feel the time pressure, the same as last week, I have no doubt. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just write out Art Wars like this. And I'm going to put that in all four, uh, sorry, all six of these boxes as I'm developing my points. Now, the reason for that is because in every single paragraph that I'm creating, I want a point, obviously, about the effect of war as something. But I also want to be using a diverse range of techniques within the poem. So I'm going to want to have some word choices. I'm going to want to have some language devices. I'm going to ideally want to maybe comment on some rhythm, rhyme, or some structure. So that's the wars bit. But I also want to be linking it to like the meanings of the poems or meanings in the poems. I want to be linking it to themes or ideas in the poems. And I want to be linking it to the tone of the poem. Okay, so I know these two poems fairly well. So one of the things that I know is the case is that one of the effects of war is, is PTSD. Uh, and actually more is trauma. Uh, for the soldiers. So if we go up to exposure, we've got tons of things that we could do for that. I'm literally going to just jump in with um, the twitching agonies of men. I think that's a really good quote. So I'm just going to pick that quote there. Twitching agonies of men. So that's a that's a language device. Okay. So I'm going to just put that in. I'm going to delete out the rest of this stuff. And, oh, and I'm just going to have this as a language device here. Now, the technique in that that I'm going to focus in on is the word agonies and the connotations of the word agonies. So it would be great if I could type today, wouldn't it? All right, so the agonies. Now, the other thing about this is I know that the agonies of men is going to create a very sinister tone as well. So I'm just going to put that in there and I can delete everything else out. Now, the art to doing a good comparison is that they don't have to be perfectly the same. So the trauma in Manhunt is going to be a little bit different, perhaps, to the trauma in Exposure. So let's look at the trauma in Manhunt. One of the ones I would do is the unexploded mine buried deep in his mind. It's a good quote for trauma. So uh, again, this is a language device. So I'm going to put it in for language here. We don't have any rhythm, rhyme, or structure for this one. The only other thing that we might have for this one is we might have that there is an internal rhyme in there. The mind very deep in his mind. But it's also a metaphor. And I'm not really sure about the the meaning of this or the ideas in this that much. I, again, know that the tone for this suddenly becomes, again, more sort of threatening and scary, basically. So, yeah, just can't spell today. Don't know what's going on. So, uh, so yeah, the effect of war is trauma for the soldiers. In the manhunt, the imagery and the metaphor of an unexploded mind very deep in his mind, 
creates a very threatening and scary tone and suggests the deep psychological trauma of the soldier. Whereas in exposure, there is psychological trauma, but there's also physical trauma. So you've got the twitching agony of men. Now, here's the thing. It's totally fine for you to change your mind on something as you're planning as well. So I'm actually going to take this away because what I've realized is I want to do two paragraphs on trauma. So I'm going to do a psychological trauma and I'm going to create a new quote for exposure there. I also am going to do a physical trauma, which I'm going to put in here um, is physical trauma. Soldiers. So don't be afraid. You don't have to stick to your original plan. If as you're planning something out, you realize you could do better, then do that. That's what I'm doing here. If if I as an English teacher of over 10 years can do that, then you certainly can do that too. So I'm going to go with uh the repetition of nothing happens actually as my quote for the psychological trauma here so it's a language device it's repetition nothing happens and that that is an idea that is repeated over and over again i think that that creates a meaning or an about which is the the futility okay so the futility of war here from the repetition of nothing happens the effect of war being physical, we've already got the physical effect on from exposure, but in the effect of war physically now in the manhunt, there's several I could use. I could use the frozen river which ran through his face, I like that one, or the blown hinge of his lower jaw, I like that one, or the hurt of his grazed heart, I could do that one. I think that I'm going to go with the blown hinge of his lower jaw, I think that's quite a vivid image of the pain that the man has gone through. So again, we've got a language device here, the blown hinge of his lower jaw, which is a metaphor. And I think that this one also shows meaning. It's the suffering of war. And in this particular poem, it's a repeated idea. So the body being used to explain the pains of war. Now, what you might notice is that this just slightly past the halfway mark, I've done two of the three paragraphs. I know that I'm going to write one on the effect of war psychologically, the war effects physically. One of the things I haven't done yet, I've done rhyme, I've done language devices, I've done tone, I've done about, I haven't, I've done a little bit on repeated ideas. So I've sort of done A, R, T, I've also done A and R, but what I haven't done, I haven't done any words yet. And I haven't done any structure yet. So in this final paragraph, as I plan that, I want to make sure I'm including a little bit of structure as well. So we've got the effect of war here. I'm not honestly 100% right now in my mind what the final paragraph is going to be. So I'm just going to have a quick flick back through the poems and try and work it out. And I know that I want to use structure. So I think that that's what's going to inspire it. So in exposure, we've got the fact that every paragraph is exactly the same, right? And in the manhunt, we also have the fact that every, not paragraph, sorry, every stanza is exactly the same. And here again, we've got every stanza is exactly the same. So we've got, we've got the, the, the rhyming couplets or the couplets, some of them rhyme and then it breaks down. And in exposure, we have every single one is what's called a quintet, right? So I'm actually gonna use that. So one of the other effects of war that we see here is the, the monotony and predictability of war monotonous and predictable. So in Manhunt, we're going to talk about how the structure being in rigid couplets shows that the, uh, the broken couple, and again, as I'm working this out, I'm evolving. So I, the, so I'm actually going to slightly change this one. So whilst the effect of war is monotonous and predictable in exposure, the uh, manhunt shows the, uh, how do I say this? Manhunt shows that the uh, couple is going through uh, relationship issues. 
So remember, just because you're comparing doesn't mean that every paragraph has to be, they don't both have to be exactly the same. So in Manhunt, we've got the rigid couple shows that the broken couple, they represent the broken couple. I can also add in some rhyme in here. The broken rhyme is the broken relationship. And then I can link this to generally a repeated idea of PTSD within the poem, the fact that the trauma of the, the man, the soldier, the PTSD of that ruins him. Whereas in the, in the exposure, the structure is all uh, rigid quintets. These are five lines. Shows the monotony of war and how nothing changes. They are just waiting for death. For this one here, I think that we can also add a, a meaning, like something that this shows about. So Owen is conveying how war is nothing like you see in the movies or the TV. Okay, there we go. So that's actually nine and a half minutes. I could add some reader response and context. Uh, in terms of reader response, basically, we're going to feel really sorry for the soldiers, aren't we? Ultimately, we're going to feel sorry for the fact that the soldier in the manhunt is psychologically and physically damaged. We're going to feel sorry for the soldier in exposure for the same reasons. We're going to maybe feel a bit frustrated by the... Uh, oh, there we go. That's the end time. We're going to feel uh, frustrated by the fact that in um, exposure we uh, can see that the soldiers are just waiting to die and we're maybe going to feel a little bit like worried and, and just hope that the couple is okay in the manhunt. So that could be a bit of reader response context that I just did verbally for you. Let's see how we're doing for time. We do have time. So what I'd like to do is actually now show you how a plan, this is kind of a bonus, I guess, how one of these planned paragraphs ends up being a real paragraph. So let's do that. I don't really mind which of these three paragraphs we do. I think that probably the most difficult one to do would be the final one. So I think let's let's chat, let's tackle that one together, just so you can see what that looks like. So um, the other, the only other thing I will say that is important to understand is I'm writing this in full sentences because I'm a very fast typer and because I've been doing this a very long time. Your plan might not be quite this detailed after ten minutes, and that's okay. It's okay if you just put keywords and stuff. So you could literally just put effect of war, psychological, right? As long as that is enough to remind you of the fact that this paragraph is going to be a psychological trauma, that's fine. Next one could be physical. Next one could be, rather than doing it this way, maybe you would do um, exposure equals monotonous, uh, manhunt equals uh, broken, broken, uh, <laughs> broken relationship yeah so you don't have to write in as much detail as i did i'm also writing in detail so you can hopefully follow along better as an audience but anyway so let's read let's let's do this paragraph together so whilst the effect of war is monotonous and predictable in exposure manhunt or in manhunt um there uh, is a uh, chaos uh, which reflects what the couple is going through uh, in terms of relationship issues. So that's going to be my point. Like always, you want to have, you know, your point is strong at the beginning, then you want to quickly get into some evidence and some techniques and everything like that. So uh, point, evidence, technique, explain. Then you're going to go on to the second paragraph, uh, the second poem. So, evidence technique explain again. And then you might finish off with a bit of reader response. And context is important if you're doing a poetry anthology. But we're not going to worry about that today. We're going to assume this is an unseen one for today. So, the effect of war is monotonous and predictable in exposure. In Manhunt, I'm actually going to change that to a semicolon because I think that will look better. In Manhunt, there's a chaos which reflects the couple is going through what the couple is going through in terms of relationship issues. In um, Manhunt, clearly the soldier is going through PTSD. 
post-traumatic stress disorder. And so the, uh, actually, which is a uh, theme which runs throughout the poem. Examiners love it if you can actually show that you can see there are certain themes and ideas that run throughout the poem. So I've added that in. The rigid couplets represent the broken couple. And since the broken rhyme, uh, or since there is a broken rhyme scheme, we get the sense that this represents a broken relationship between soldier and wife. Okay? It's really that simple. If you've got good ideas in your plan, you're basically just joining the dots at this point. Now, I think it would be good to go a little bit deeper in the actual paragraph. Um, the fact that the poem ends on a half rhyme reflects that there is hope that the couple may be able to heal from this trauma and the effects of war, which ultimately leaves the poem on a hopeful tone. So notice how I'm getting tone in as well. So I've done some repeated ideas, I've done some uh, structure, and I've done some, uh, some tone as well between the soldier and, and wife. Yeah, good. So that's that bit. Now, with the other two paragraphs, you would say similarly, because both of them have physical trauma, both of them have psychological trauma. However, this one is contrasting. So contrastingly, Owen uses structure to convey how war is nothing like you see in the media. It is not action packed. It is actually mostly waiting. The, uh, the soldier is still fighting. Therefore, unlike in Manhunt, he is not suffering PTSD. He is simply suffering. The rigid quintets show the monotony of war and how nothing changes. They are just waiting for death in the trenches. The final line of each stanza also punctuates this as every stanza finishes with a negative phrase, such as, uh, or is it that we are dying? Oh, or, yeah, what are we doing here? Yeah. I like, is it that we are dying as well? Um, which ties in to a central in the poem of the futility of war as one of its effects. Okay, there you go. So, so what we've got there is a pretty good comparative paragraph. I didn't know if I'd have time to do that as well in the session, but luckily I did. So let's just have a quick look. That's 230 words, which is basically spot on. I would recommend you write between 200 and 300 words in each of your comparative paragraphs, whether that's for unseen poetry or for poetry anthology. I would say if it's poetry anthology, you want to go a little bit bigger, so maybe closer towards the 300. If it's unseen poetry, probably a little bit less, so close to, towards the 200. But obviously I could put a lot more into this. I could put in a little bit about the reading response and the context for each poem as well. That would then bulk it up to more like 300 words. So, so there you go, that's the through line. If you have never really known how to compare two texts, just remember this isn't just for poetry. You can compare two texts using this same sort of grid table system in your language exam as well. I think that's really useful. So. You know, there are some comparative questions in language comparing two sources, stuff like that. So do it like this. Have your points and your ideas lined up in the first column, then have the first text and the second text, the next two columns. If you need some other 
element like reader response or context or critic quotes or whatever you can always have another column there you don't we didn't really need it today so i could just get rid of that right but but you know structure your plan for success um yeah i think that's everything for today so thanks very much if you like the video please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions or comments please comment down below next week we are going to be going through um i haven't actually worked that out yet so sorry about that but we we will be going through several other things together probably next week we'll be going through a model answer of a um of a poetry essay and i'll be giving you a breakdown of how that looks like a full essay not just one paragraph so anyway stay tuned thanks for joining and i'll see you next time